Um, so hello and welcome to the Michael Collins House podcast. Um, this time we have a special centenary commemoration episode which is available in both video and podcast format. And joining us today is renowned historian Liz Gillis. Um, I'm sure many of our listeners will know Liz as a regular on history programmes and on, on RT and elsewhere. And, and her publications include Women of the Irish Revolution, uh, Revolution in Dublin, and most recently with the Dublin Brigade, which obviously has um, is a Michael Collins related subject there as well. Um, but our discussion today is on another of her books, and that is of the Hales brothers. And today we'll be focusing more on, I suppose, one of the brothers, and in particular as we pro- approach the centenary of his death, and that is Sean Hales. Um, so welcome Liz Gillis. Thank you very much for coming and talking to us today. Thanks for having me, Jamie. It's lovely to be here. Great stuff, great stuff. So first off, Liz, I suppose what I'd like to do, obviously the, the Hales family, they were kind of the, the very Irish Republican family, not just the, the, the two well-known, Sean and Tom, but the rest of the family are involved in it as well. Would you mind giving us just a little bit of background of the, the Hales family as a as a unit? Yeah, so the all of them are involved. So Tom and Sean, of course, are the most well-known out of the Hales family, but Madge, Robert, Liam, and then Donal in Italy. They all had a part, part to play in the Irish Revolution. Um, Tom was actually the first to join the Irish Volunteers, even though Sean was the, the older brother. Um, he joined as soon as the Kilpatrick Company had been set up. That was the first company set up in Bandon. Um, but Tom is very much the, the, the leader, emerges as a leader very early on. But soon after, he's joined by Sean, Liam and Robert. Now, Donna was living in Italy at the time and he becomes very much involved in the war of independence because as that war progresses you have the international dimension coming into it and the the propaganda war that emerges during the war of independence and this where people like Donald people who are abroad they come into their own in that respect because he provides a, 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 a sort of a vehicle for the word to be spread internationally. So the Irish Bulletin, which was the Irish, um, the Republican news sheet uh, that was collated and printed in Dublin, but the information was gathered from all across Ireland about what was happening in Ireland in 1919, 1920. Um, that's then translated into different languages and it's sent to the Republic Con- Republican Council. So that would be then spread throughout Italy. Um, you have it being uh, published in, in French. It was also distributed to America. At one stage, you have English politicians reflecting back or referencing the Irish Bulletin in the House of Commons because the information was so accurate and because of all the censorship. Um, Madge Hales, and she's the sort of like the, the, the unsung hero of the family because while her brothers are involved, you know, they're there in 1916, um, Tom went on the run um, after the Easter Rising. Sean, Robert and Liam were actually arrested after the Easter Rising. Um, the, the police came to the house looking for them. Actually, Terence and Sweeney is in the family home and they're all arrested. Sean is arrested at a later date. So Tom had to go on the run after 1916. The three brothers are interned in Frongok. They're released and they come home. But then as soon as the reorganisation begins, they're right in the thick of it. And you see the reorganization of the volunteers in Cork because at 1916, or at the time of 1916, there was one Cork brigade, but it was massive, like it's, it's a huge area. So very early on, Cork is divided up into three brigades and Tom's appointed leader, commanding officer of the Tour West Cork Brigade, which becomes a really, really famous brigade in the War of Independence. And then Sean becomes the commanding officer of Bannon. So when one moves up, another brother steps in. So you have them all over, like they, they are there, you know, they're <clears throat> they're connected to Bannon and the activities of the Bannon Brigade, the Tour West Cork Brigade, they're there right from the start. Um, now, very infamously, in the war of independence, because Tom is such a wanted man, there is obviously, you know, the, the Crown Force are looking for him, for Sean, and um, for any of them, um, and any of the key figures in West Cork. So in July 1920, Tom is arrested alongside Pat Hart, um, and this was in response to an RAC man, man that had been killed, and they suffered 
horrific treatment at the hands of the Essex Regiment. And there's a very famous photograph from the Imperial War Museum, which shows the two of them at some point during the, the torture. Um, and then they're both sent to prison. Now, while that happens, Madge Hales, while this is all going on, so our brothers are on the run, they're wanted by the authorities. She has to keep everything together. And this is what you find with the women pretty much across the board, that while their brothers or, you know, the, their relations are on the run, someone has to keep the, 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 the sort of the everyday going. So they had a farm. And it was it felt mad to look after that farm. Now she herself most likely have been a member of Coming Amon, but you also find a number of women are told to leave Coming Amon, not to make it obvious that they're involved. Now, Madge Hales would have been on the radar because of her brothers in any way. But the house is constantly raided. The military are constantly coming. And actually, in March 1921 the family home is, is born to the ground. You have these official reprisals that are taking place. Um, their farmhand is, is murdered by the Crown forces. Um, our father's health suffers greatly because of this, because not only have we got the worry of his sons being on the run, his son is imprisoned and, you know, trying to, to heal from what had happened to him during his interrogation. But then his home is destroyed in front of him. And Madge has to keep her all together, as well as trying to organise shipments of weapons from Italy through Donal back to uh, Cork. So in the whole Hale story, they're all involved. Robert and Liam, they're involved, like, you know, big ambushes that take place. Like in, in nearly every ambush that happens in and around West Cork, you'll find one or other of the Hales brothers. There's very few that are not involved. Michael would be the one that they're not involved in, but Cross Barry um, and many others. But Madge is the one that we we don't hear as much about. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, that is generally the case with, with the women. But she is a really important cog in the whole Hales family story. After the War of Independence, obviously they're, they're quite involved in the, the War of Independence. The, the, the truce comes and eventually to sign a treaty. And I suppose this is kind of where the, the Hales family, where their story is quite well known from whether people know it as the Hale story or not, the, the Mike Noel as the wind that shakes the barley, which is quite based on the Hales family. Um, but I, I suppose, can you just tell us a little bit about, I suppose, how how that split came about and and what happened thereafter as well with, with Tom and Sean and, and, and the rest of the family as well? Obviously, there was, there was a split in the rest of the family as well. Yeah, Jamie, as you said, like the, the Hales family epitomised the whole tragedy of the Civil War and Wind Shakes Barley pretty much is, is their story. But what you have is the Anglo-Irish Treaty is signed. Madge and Sean, they accept the treaty. And you have Donald, Tom, Robert and Liam, and they oppose the treaty. And I suppose it's 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 quite surprising for, for Madge to, to accept the treaty, considering what she herself had witnessed throughout the War of Independence and the hardship that she endured. Um, but one thing I, I, will, I will stress very importantly, and I think this gets lost in the whole, you know, pro and anti-treaty side, is that both sides were Republican. Now, Sean Hales, who had been elected as a TD um, previous to this, because you have the whole, you know, elections that, that take place, um, there is a council meeting um, in the lead up to the, the, the civil war taking place and a councillor makes the point or, or refers to those who reject the treaty are Republican. And Sean Hales takes exception to this because he was a Republican. Those at the time, those people who, the majority of them who accepted the treaty, all of them, the belief was that this is a stepping stone. They really did believe in that stepping stone theory that this would lead to the full tourist to country republic at a later date. And Sean Hales actually states that in the private debates um, on the, the treaty. Um, he actually says, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, but the reason he accepts it is because Britain had shown in the past through the numerous treaties that have been signed um, that she can't be trusted. She has broken every treaty that she signed with Ireland. Well, now it's our turn to pay her back. So basically, let's let's play the game for a while. When we're strong enough, because Britain would be shipping in arms, um, you know, just bide our time, 
and then we'll strike again and we will get the North back. So so Sean Hales and all of them didn't believe that the 26 county state that we got was the be all and end all. Now, Tom is in prison in England um, at the time of the treaty and he's then released because that's one of the terms of the treaty. Anyone sentenced, it would be then released and he comes back around late January 1922. And you've seen it yourself, like the, the, the public Ar arguments that happen between the pro and anti treaty side and the media are all over it. And they they try to draw Tom and Sean out to attack each other. You know, Sean would appear at a, an event for the, the treaty side or Tom would speak at an event for, you know, the anti treaty side, but they never actually attacked each other. Um, so politically they have their differences, but they would never personally attack each other. And that actually remains the case right through the the up until Sean's death or up until Tom is imprisoned. They they were still able to have that relationship with each other, even though they were on the political divide. Um so the 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 civil war it does break out. Um, Tom in the lead up, um, he was a member of the anti-treaty IRA executive, along with others such as Florio Donoghue, Liam Lynch and so on. And they have the convention in March 1922 in Dublin in the Mansion House. <clears throat> but there's a huge um, emphasis being put on the, the general election that will take place known as the, the treaty election. And you have a sort of a, a, a breakdown within the ranks of the anti treaty IRA because people like Tom Hales believe that, look, we, we need to give the people, the electorate, the chance to, to have their say on this. And if they say, if they vote for this, well, you know, we're the representatives, we have no right to, to go against them. But you have that split within the anti treaty IRA. So Tom and a number of others resign from the anti treaty executive. Um, so they're quite moderate. Um, now, once the Civil War begins, you then have people like Tom Hales and others who, once it starts, Liam Lynch is another key figure, um, they will see it right through to the end. So the Civil War breaks out in June 1922 in Dublin, and Dublin is taken pretty quickly by the pro-treaty forces, but you have Liam Lynch, who had been in Dublin at the start of the Civil War, is arrested by the, the pro-treaty forces, um, is let go by the pro-treaty forces. And once he goes, he goes back down to Munster and very quickly the pro-treaty side realise Liam Lynch, who was a moderate, is actually the, the leader because of that split. He's back in charge um, and we can't contain, contain this in Dublin. So the, the war moves south and we see it then progressing. Um, it, it just gets worse very quickly. Collins, of course, is killed in August. Um, Sean Hales now is, is um, one of the leading officers down in West Cork. Tom is the leading officer on the Anti Treaty side. Sean is a leader on the Pro Treaty side. But there's a great account. Um, John L. John L. O'Sullivan. Um, he he had an interview or gave an interview because he actually served with Sean. And there was one time where they came upon a, a group of Anti Treaty IRA, and they were very well armed, as in the Pro Treaty side, very well armed, big guns and so on. But um, he, he orders the men who are using the, the big guns to just fire empty shells. You know, he, he doesn't want to kill anyone because potentially his brothers could be in that position. So although you have Sean Hales determined to actually, you know, take the south, take his area and have it back in the hands of the pro treaty side, um, he's not willing to be one who will you know, sort of descend into the, the chaos that we see happening very quickly um, in Dublin and what happens after Collins' death with the murder gangs and the reprisals uh, and so on. Yes, so I, I suppose kind of after this point, Liz, you have the kind of the, the emergency orders that the the um, the Free State bring in um, for, I, I suppose, people carrying arms um, and then the, the executions, the, I suppose, official executions, as we'd say, um, begin. Um, at, coming up to, I suppose, this point 100 years ago, um, you had uh, a number had been carried out already, the highest profile being at uh, Erskine Childers just about a, a week previous. Um, kind of in, in response to this, then, um, Liam Lynch kind of 
I suppose releases a statement kind of officially saying that that there's they're going to be people who kind of allow this to happen are going to be held to account and I suppose this is kind of where we are at this point in in the following weeks and we, we kind of see the results that would you just tell us a little I suppose a little bit about that and how how, how this kind of I, I suppose affected the next week's events yeah so just to go back a little bit Jamie because there's a whole sort of lead up to this um, and it really starts after Collins is killed in Cork and you know Sean Hales is the last officer to see Michael Collins um, in band and when he's on that trip in West Cork and well <clears throat> Sean Hales is telling Collins you know don't go down that way you know it's too dangerous roads have been mined or you know it's all disrupted disruptive um tom hales is overseeing the ambush in which collins will be killed um and there's a real worry on sean's head that you know if his brothers are arrested you know especially tom you know the anger that is felt after collins is is killed is it's huge um so that's another worry that's on sean but two days after collins is death you see the reprisals in dublin um and it's the murder of two members of Nafina Aaron um Collie and Cole. Um Nafina come in for particular attention because they had just had a meeting that the majority of them go anti treaty and they provide a constant stream of recruits into the anti treaty IRA. Now the thing is, these two young men are kidnapped in broad daylight in front of witnesses on the north side of Dublin. They're murdered in front of witnesses. Um, but this sets the scene of what's going to happen. So you see the reprisals really now um, ramping up. So there is, a, 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 I suppose, a feeling that something's going, you know, it's, it's all going out of control. And to act as a deterrent, the government needs to come down hard and, you know, policies need to be enacted by the government. And so the military courts are set up at the request of the army. So you have the resolution now. It's 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 called many things, the army, um, army resolution, the, the Special Powers Act, but it's not an act because actually there was no legal um, sort of... Uh, there was no legitimate reason to set this up. The, the, the procedures weren't there because the free state didn't exist. So they hadn't got the right to actually pass a law. Um, if they did, they'd have to get um, permission from the king to do this. So they weren't going to do that. But anyway, the resolution was passed setting up the military courts. Now, the doll voted on this. And what you get from Liam Lynch, that order then, is following the executions that have taken place. Because although it's passed on the 28th of September, 1922, the first executions don't happen until the 17th of November, 1922. And there's four lads executed in Clemenum Jail. They're charged with, you know, being in possession of arms. Um, by the 30th of November, um, you have 12 men are executed. The highest profile, as I said, is the and Childers. But what the Anne Street side realised is that they're not going to stop with this. So the order that Liam Lynch sends out basically is anyone who voted for this murder bill, as, as the Anne Street IRA call it, um, is then a legitimate target for assassination. Now, one person who did not vote on it, who was not in the doll, is Sean Hales. Um, one of the people who did vote and vote in favour of this resolution was Porrick O'Malley, who was the last count call of um of the doll. So you see it ramping up because although the the legislation or the resolution is brought in to deter the anti treaty IRA, it doesn't because the anti treaty IRA were having successes and big successes against the pro treaty side. But then you have Sean Hales is in Dublin. Um, the doll um, sat in frequently at, at this stage, but you have the Free State actually coming into existence on the 6th of December 1922, because it came in a year after the, the Anglo-Irish Treaty had been signed up, so that was like the provisional government. Um, and on the 7th of December, Sean Hales in Dublin, because he wanted to ask questions about what happened at Ben Le Blanc. Um, there was no inquest into Collins's death. Um, Porrick O'Malley, as the last count Corla, was in a position to have those questions raised in the doll. They're staying in the Ormond Hotel, um, which is on the north side of the, the Liffey, um, just down from City Hall in Dublin. And they left the Ormond Hotel to make their way to the doll. And a, a, a Jarvey pulled up. So what happens is that Porrick O'Malley gets on 
the 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 Jarvey. But someone recognised him, a friend has recognised him, and called him back. And Sean Hales, who was getting on Jarvey after Amalia, he moves across. Now, literally at that moment, you have members of the Anne Street IRA that come out from the the little side street and Cable Street, it seems, um, and the open fire. And Sean is hit. Amalia is hit. Amalia was the target, um, but he's he's wounded. However, Sean takes the full full force of it. And despite the fact that Jervis Street Hospital was like less than, you know, five minutes away, um, it, it was too late. By the time they get into Jervis Street Hospital, Sean was dead. And this is all in response to the executions that had been taking place. So Sean Hales, who was a person that did not vote in this uh, resolution, is actually the person that dies because of that emergency uh, legislation that was brought in. Um, and then it just goes crazy after that. I suppose, Liz, as you say, this is kind of where the, the, the civil war escalates and you kind of, it's, I suppose, one of the, the darkest periods, I think, of Irish history where you have, um, I suppose, executions, whether official or unofficial, being carried out that are, I suppose questionable morally and legally and everything else as well, and particularly how they selected the 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 men in response to the the killing of of Sean. And um, you might talk to us just a, a small bit about that and about the the men who were selected and why they were selected and that. Yeah. So so what happens like this is a, it it's it's it sort of hits right at the heart of the doll the the assassination of Sean Hales, um because. What the what the, the free state government are trying to establish is is a state. Um and they feel that not only is the, the, the civil war getting out of control, but also there's potential for anarchy to be to be, you know, unleashed from the civilian population. So everything is sort of like, you know, hanging on on like it's really, really tense. And what happens after Sean Hales' assassination is the government just pick four men known as the Mountjoy Four, um, who had been imprisoned in Mountjoy Jail since the fall of the Four Courts. Um, purely as a reprisal, they would be executed for the assassination of Sean Hales. Now, whereas, you know, you can sort of argue with the resolution as in the military courts being set up, the legality of them, there is no reason, there is no, like, you cannot actually say these executions were legal because the four men had nothing to do with the assassination of Sean Hales. They don't steal with that order that was given out because they were in prison for months before it happened. Now, there is a quote from W.T. Cosgrave, who's the, the president um, of the, the, the Free State Government, um, in response to explain why the executions happened. And what he said was that him and the Minister for Defence, Richard Mulcahy, on the 6th of December, um, they were discussing giving another um, appeal for clemency to the anti-treaty IRA. There had been a number of appeals, you know, give up your arms and, and it'll be all over type thing. And they were discussing that on the 6th of December. Um, but Cosgrave says, with the assassination of Hales, there's only one way now to deal with this and it's to smash them. So basically, one side is going to win this, and it's going to be the Free State. It's not going to be the Anne Street IRA. So what happens the next day, the very next day, the 8th of December, four men are chosen in Mount Joy Jail. Now, it's sending a message to the IRA all over the country. So the four that are chosen are Rory O'Connor, um, Liam Mellows, Joe McKelvey, and Dick Barry. West Cork. Um, and each represents a province. So Liam Mellows is Connacht, Dick Barrett is um is Munster, Joe McKelvey is Ulster, and Roy O'Connor is uh, Leinster. And Mellows and, and, and Roy O'Connor are high profile. Um, they had been the, the, the leadership of the executive, and um, Roy O'Connor was like the face of the Anne Street IRA. Um, but on the morning of the 8th of May. They're just taking out their cells. They're given an opportunity to, to write some letters, I think. Um, and they're told that they are being executed in reprisal for the assassination of Sean Hills. And they're executed in Mountjoy Jail. Um, there is no legal justification for this because they don't do it. Nothing to do with the death of Sean Hills. Um, there is immediate horror from 
many outlets with this, especially from the Hales family, um, because they say Sean Hales would not want this. Now, to compound the tragedy, we look at Dick Barrett. He should not have been in Mount Joy. He should not have been in the forecourt because he had actually been there because of Liam Lynch. Um, Liam Lynch and Liam DC leave the forecourt and they, you know, go away. Dick Barrett should have went with them, but he stayed. And then he gets arrested and that's how he ends up in Mount Joy Jail. But Dick Barrett and Sean were very close friends. He'd been his quartermaster in the War of Independence. And the family, Sean Hales' family, write a letter and published in the newspaper saying, Sean Hales would not want this. We do not want this. We do not agree with this policy of reprisal. So you have that reaction. And it's just tragedy after tragedy after tragedy because then that very same night in response to the assess or to the executions, the Ant Street IRA then go on the hunt as in they start attacking the property of TDs, of high profile politicians or other figures that they can target. And we have Sean McGarry's family home um, in the days that follow this um, is, is born and his young son Emma McGarry is, is killed in the thing. So it's just that the, the death of Sean Hales, the ripple effect is just, it goes everywhere. It filters right out and the fallout is, is so huge. But you've got so many communities that are impacted by that one event, by his death um, in Dublin. It just has an awful effect right throughout the country. Um, and it just shows that the war is not going to end anytime soon and it's just going to get worse because while you have those four executions, there's a couple more in December, January hits and the pro treaties, the, the Free State government realise it's not going to stop. We really have to drive this home. And I think the number, I could be wrong, but I think it's 34 men, 34 um, prisoners are executed in January alone. Yeah, I, I suppose I, I think the the execution of Sean particularly is, is kind of something that is on, a little bit underestimated when people look back at the history of the Civil War. Um, it, it definitely is kind of, the, I think, the turning point previous to that. A lot of things can be justified for one reason or another. And um, that I think kind of after that, it's really the gloves come off. Um and and you know it is it's kind of retribution. It's um emotion. The, you know, like emotions get involved. Previous it was kind of politics and people were getting on with it. But I think from that point onwards is where really kind of it starts to get 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 nasty as such. Um, but I suppose Liz, what I that's kind of brings us to the end of of where we are today. I think we we've covered everything that that we set out to cover on it as well. And um, we look hopefully in the, in the next um podcast we we look at the next stage of the civil war and the the following executions and I, I suppose eventually how the how the war came to an end that we're we're kind of starting to approach that at least and getting out of this difficult part of Irish history. Um, and um, I, I suppose uh, for ourselves, and we just want to say thank you very much um, for joining us today. It's it's great to have such a a, a, a well-known and eminent historian with us and talking about this and talking about it so eloquently as well um, and, and kind of making it so simple and easy to understand for, for us lay people, as they say. So thank you very much, Liz. No, thanks a million, Jane, for having me. An absolute pleasure. <laughs>